Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to continue solving more trig equations and in this video we're going to focus on uh, equations in which it's beneficial to collect like terms as well as extract roots. Okay, So uh, we're going to do these uh, respectively in that order starting with this one on the left here we say uh, let's solve this equation for x, this angle x. We say sine of x plus radical 2 is equal to negative uh, sine of x. So what we'd like to do is solve for all x values that makes us true um, first thing we'd like to do is actually this, when you solve a trig equation, as much as possible you'd like to isolate the trig function itself if you can. So that being said, our primary method of solving this is to collect like terms. That is, we're actually going to take this sign on the right here, we'll just add it to both sides. So sine of x, uh, we'll add a sine of x here as well. Uh, and basically what you see is this, we, we get rid of all the signs on the right hand side of this equation and we're left with two signs on the left hand side of this equation. So this is, I hate to say it, this is a very, very basic trig equation, but let's look at it this way. Before we solve this, we're gonna have to isolate the trig function, which means, hey, this radical two has to go, and so does this multiple of two, this factor of two. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and subtract radical two from both sides, radical two, radical two. And so we get left with two of these signs of x is equal to negative radical two, and furthermore, we're gonna go ahead and divide by two on both sides. And so we've isolated our trig function just straight up down to sine x, and we say this is equal to negative radical 2 over 2. Now, I'm not going to promise you anything, but you know, radical 2 over 2 is a number that you should be used to in trig, uh, especially with sine values. If, you know, if you're ending up with numbers that are, that are odd, not like this, it's not that you should be worried. It's just that you tend to have to grab a calculator at that point. So we tend to look for problems coming up with exact values that we're, we're familiar with. Anyways. Uh, moving onward, we say, okay, so now that we've got the trig function isolated, we'll undo it. We'll undo it by doing the sine inverse of both sides. So we say sine inverse of the left-hand side is equal to the sine inverse of the arc sine of the right-hand side. So our sine in inverse and sine cancel out. We're left with x is equal to sine inverse of negative radical 2 over 2. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, we know that sine, man, it only ever comes up with uh, radical 2 over 2. I'm going to ignore the negative for just a second, but radical 2 over 2 at 45 degree reference angles. You know, that's like, that's like these guys here. And furthermore, we say, well, sine, uh, if it came out to be negative, okay, it must be at either this quadrant here or this quadrant, uh, sorry, sorry, that's wrong, that's wrong, uh, this quadrant here or this quadrant down here. So we're looking for these two angles here in standard form. We say 45 degrees past 180 and 45 short of 360. We can go though and look at our unit circle here which basically uh, you know clearly says that well sine would be negative radical 2 over 2 where our y values would be negative radical 2 over 2. So we say 5 pi force and we also have a 7 pi force. So that being said we say well then x x is equal to 5 pi fourths and 7 pi fourths. But recall from my last video we talked about solutions and the bottom line is this, we say as long as the only spots for which uh, sine gives you this, but also any angle that's coterminal with these. So it's our responsibility to add on any multiple of the period of this graph, and the period of a sine graph is 2 pi. So we say these are infinitely many solutions to this equation, and they're easily checkable. We just plug them back into the original, which I don't have time to do that in this video. So moving right along, let's take a look at the second equation. In this equation, uh, you notice I was saying, that we need to extract roots. And the primary cause of this is essentially that we have a squared on our trig function. Okay, so uh, this, I just want you to keep in mind that you would solve this in, in very much the same way you would solve 3x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. We would isolate the squared base and then use a root to extract it. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and start by adding 1 to both sides. So if we add 1 to both sides, we end up with this remaining equation, 3 tangent squared x equals positive 1. Go ahead and divide both sides by 3. Divide by 3, divide by 3. So we end up with this now. We say tangent squared x is equal to a third. And here's where the extraction of a root comes in. But we say to undo the squared, before we do our tangent, we have to undo this, this squared right here. So this does it. That does the trick right there. We're left with tangent of x. But this is the important thing. You're left with uh, a radical of a quotient, which is the same thing as a radical of the, the numerator and the denominator, which is the same thing in this case as plus or minus. That's so important. Uh, 1 over radical 3, which after rationalizing this denominator, after rationalizing it, uh, essentially we, we crank out this plus or minus radical 3 over 3. And so the important things here are these. We say, well, first of all, you've got to include this plus or minus. And second of all, radical 3 over 3, again, hey, dealing with tangent here. And that's just, boy, that's just one of the numbers you're used to dealing with, with exact values. So in order to solve this now, and I would like to clean it up a little bit, but we say, okay, so tangent of x is equal to, equal to, 
uh, plus or minus radical 3 thirds. We're going to do to undo tangent. We're going to do the arc tangent or tangent inverse of both sides. So we say tangent inverse. These inverse functions cancel. We're left with x. We say, okay, so what angles could we take the tangent of and get radical 3 over 3? And if you know anything about your unit circle, we say radical 3 over 3 with tangent values occurs at, uh, say, pi 6, pi 6 here. But we said a oh, positive or negative. Radical 3 over 3. So not just pi 6, but it could be pi 6. It could be actually 5 pi 6. It could be 7 pi 6 or, uh, or 11 pi 6. So we've got a lot of these in this case. We say, okay, so pi, pi 6, 5 pi 6. We also have 7 pi 6 and 11 pi 6. 11 pi 6. And of course, we have to add on, add on a full period or any multiple of full periods on this graph. And since we're dealing with tangent, of course, we're going to add on just uh, pi n, multiples of pi. And the reason why is because the period of the tangent graph is just pi n, with pi n. So this has many, many solutions. But um, yeah, those are just two quick examples of uh, typical trig functions you see with collecting like terms and extracting roots and listing your answers. Enjoy.